Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Will you stand if you're able? Let's praise.
Let's say a prayer together, family. Our loving God, we are here to pause, first of all, to give thanks for all the good that you have done, that you are doing, and that you will do in our life. God, we just want to give a moment to acknowledge that you've brought us here. None of us would be here without your grace, without your hand, without your mercy. We don't want to take any breath for granted, but see each breath and each day as a gift from you. And Lord, we pray for those that came in today carrying heavy weights and burdens. God, that they will feel your grace in their life today, lifting that burden. Lord, we pray for healing for people that are sick and afflicted. We pray for grace for those that need strength. And God, we pray for wisdom for those that are struggling, needing your guidance. God, we pray that you will fill us all with your spirit, with love and grace for others that are around us today. We cast all of our burdens, our worries, and our cares to you today knowing that you care for us. In Christ's name, amen. 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 Will you turn and say hi to some folks nearby, and then you can have a seat this morning. Thank you. Okay, that's enough. That's enough. Uh, good to see you guys. Um, after, after service, do all the fellowship. We got coffee out there, so go for it. We love it. And stay and hang out, and we'll be here at the end. And we have a prayer team at the front, so if you need prayer, my goodness, uh, this morning is just one person after another after another. I've had so many conversations. Good friends and family members of Orchard Grove have lost loved ones, and people that are fighting in the balance and, and everything in between. And so we just want you to know that uh, your church family is here to pray for you. They'll be here at the end of the service. I have no idea what the rest of the announcements are, so if anybody can <laughs> bail me out here for my inadequacies, thank you. Let's see, we gotta keep it humble here. Anybody with me? <laughs> keep it real, all right. There you go, this is much better. Uh, ladies, there's a, a special uh, women's event this, uh, this Thursday in Milford. So uh, go to orchardgrove.org and you can sign up for that. It's a music in the park this Thursday. Uh, last week to sign up for kids camp. So all the young ones, this is the elementary age kids, uh, August 7th to the 11th. And uh, today after service is... Uh, the Orchard Grove Seniors. And man, they had the coolest, last month the, you guys got to hear from a lady that works with elephants and it was so fascinating. She wrote a book and Charlie got a little book and uh, they do so many great things. And so if you've never been to the Orchard Grove Seniors, you can stop into the community room right after. And what a great guest today will be, Pastor Bright Kawamba and Esther, his beautiful bride. All right, so uh, they're gonna be talking about what it's, I've said this for years, if you guys have been around Orchard Grove, if you haven't sat down with Pastor Bright and just talked to him about what it's like to grow up in Malawi, you have missed something very special in life. And so uh, you can just show up, right? Just show up. There you go, after service. Um, last but not least is uh, we've rented out a movie theater over at United Artists so we can take uh, you to the movies. And so we have a private screening and we have the whole theater to ourselves. And so you can get tickets out there. It's first come, first serve, and it is limited. So once the theater fills up, you will get like a standby ticket and then we'll see if we can get a bigger theater. That's kind of how it will work. So you'll see it, it's out there. It's called The Sound of Freedom. And uh, I've already seen it. And uh, if you have, yeah, it is. Uh, I will tell you this. It's something you have to see. 
And uh, we've done this a few times over the years. Um, and you, I know some movies, it's not like you want to go and just uh, celebrate afterwards. But um, we're going to have a venue where we can dialogue afterwards, because I think that's what you feel like you need to do. Like, I have to process what I just saw. And so we're going to do it together as a family, and then we'll have a way that we together get you know, to talk about it and discuss it with the people that uh, you watch it with. So you can grab your tickets out there afterwards. Um, if you'd like to uh, give in the offering today, we'd love your support. Thank you so much for what you do to make Orchard Grove happen. So your tithes or offerings, you can give at the boxes on the way out if you're in the room. And for everybody online uh, or who like to give electronically, just go to orchardgrove.org, Venmo or PayPal, or you can use the church center app uh, to give. A lot of different ways to do it these days. So just from my heart, I want to say thank you guys for hanging in there for an entire half a year of going through Exodus. You guys are doing well, all right? So um, today begins season three, all right? Season three. We're going to leave Mount Sinai, and we're going to travel a little bit. So we're going to bid farewell. Um, but uh, we're going to continue going through Exodus uh, for a, a little while longer. And uh, thanks for, for being a part of it. And what you can do, because a lot of people have talked to me about like what it's um, stirred inside of them or the dialogue that it's brought to them, is um, you can share it. So if you uh, go to uh, YouTube, you can subscribe to our channel. And then also if you follow us on Facebook, there's different ways you can share it. Um, if you can't drag someone to church, you know what I mean? They got things to do or they have church phobia, just uh, share it online. It's a good, good way to do it. You'd say, well, just, just check this out. You can do it that way. All right. Enjoy the service, everybody. God bless.
won't fail you Thanks for blessing us, you guys. We appreciate it. I just would, maybe I don't normally do this, but because it's so, at least pronounced in my mind today, um, you know, Tracy, who was over here, um, she just lost her mom. Um, and then um, I think it's a similar, form, I may, may be wrong, but a similar form of dementia to what my mom's been diagnosed with, and then um, Emily's dad's struggling with Alzheimer's, had a really bad week. And um, so, you know, it, here they are just giving to you guys, and they're going through their own struggles, you know. And I don't share for any reason other than, I guess, once in a while, it's just important for us all to know that we're all going through things. And, uh, and the other thing it made me think about is, Obviously, we love them and we appreciate them. Um, it also made me think about as we're, we're singing that beautiful song, you know, I will trust you, I will trust in God. Like when you say that out loud, I, I think there's a difference. There's a difference to hearing it, hearing me saying or reading it, I trust in God or I believe in God. And when you say something like that out loud, and I want you to think about this for your own life and purposes because I don't know how to exactly to explain it, but it does something to you. Where if you just, like I tend to internally do things in my head a lot of times, but um, here's an example. Have you ever, um, does anybody get tired of getting these like codes? Like I already have my password and my login. It's bad enough to know your password and login. Please God, no more of them. How do you do it? You have like a little notes thing on your phone and you're like, this is where all my passwords are somewhere. I don't know how people do it. And then when you have it and then they have to verify it, yeah. now they go back and they give you these codes. And I, I noticed something about myself. If I just say the code out loud, six digit code, I say it out loud, I can, I can remember it. But if I read it and then try to punch it in, I have a harder time. Just say it out loud. It does something to you. It, it, it grabs you. And I'm saying it for a reason because I think 
when it comes to our faith, last week, the thing I was really trying to do was I was trying to get us to take all of this and actually internalize it. After Jesus' brilliant sermon on the mount, at the end, it's all about, so are you going to do it or not do it? You know, because it doesn't matter how good the sermon is. You can take a bad sermon, and if you do something with it, it's a good one. You know what I mean? Poorly delivered, but you, you got the nugget that you needed, and you did it, and you applied it. And so application, doing it, is everything. And I think verbalizing it helps you to do that. And so I want to say thank you to the team. Thank you. God bless you guys. We appreciate you so much for taking us there. And, um, and I hope you'll take advantage of it. And I know we have a wide variety here, right? We got all kinds, but I always tell people, you do you, right? If you got a bunch of ex-Catholics that this is the best they can do, and that, nothing wrong with that, and I'm not trying to throw shade on anybody, but you, that's fine. But if you came out of this and this is you, then you, you, you go for it. Don't hit anybody, but go for it, right? You, you, but, but what I would like to say is this, you get into it, you vocalize it, you connect when we're worshiping together because that will take you from observing to entering, to experiencing. And uh, I think God, I personally think God loves the variety. Is anybody with me? I think God absolutely loves it. And, and so you, you do you, but make sure you, you get involved. Okay, um, next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna tell everybody in the booth back there to relax because all the stuff I sent you earlier in the week, I'm probably not gonna use so that'll give everyone a little peace of mind back there. I must be the worst person to follow, I, I admit. Uh, but I'm not going to probably use any of it, so that'll help you guys settle down. I, I, couldn't, I, I couldn't leave Mount Sinai as quickly as I wanted to. So, but I will, we're going to start at the, at the very end, right after the last of the Ten Commandments are given. I'll read the next few verses. Um, so they, they won't be on the screens because I just... I just came up with this. <laughs> when the people saw the thunder, so they literally have just finished the last of the commandments. When the people saw the thunder and lightning and heard the trumpet and saw the mountain in smoke, they trembled with fear. They stayed at a distance. That's how it ends. It's what I call healthy fear. Healthy fear. If at times through the series I, I repeat myself, I'm not intentionally trying to, but I'm trying, it, this does repeat itself, and I think sometimes what we need to really learn is repetition. And, and sometimes what, what happens is, you know, if you come to church, it's not that I always say something new, but you just get reminded of something that you needed to know. Has that ever happened to you? It's like, yeah, I knew that. Ah, all right. Healthy fear. So, for years I've talked about this scripture that perfect love drives out fear. And I believe, in, I believe in that with all of my heart. That ultimately where all this goes to is love. But perfect love. And to have a good relationship, this is about our relationship with God and this is about our relationship with others. There needs to be some healthy fear. Now fear being, as we've talked about, awe, respect, reverence. Um, yesterday I was at a party f for a good friend of mine and everybody was there and we were celebrating his birthday and all of a sudden there was thunder and lightning and everybody went, <gasps> you know what I mean? Everybody was having a great time and then when it, as soon as you, every, it got everyone's attention. So you just have to understand that this was just, it wasn't just like a, a an email that was slipped in somewhere or, or, a, or a little memo put in someone's box. I mean, this was accompanied with thunder and lightning. It got everyone's attention. No one was going to say, you know, I, I really wasn't there the day they did the commandments. I really wasn't. I didn't know about that one. It was, it was captivating for everyone. We all need healthy fear. Healthy. I'll just keep emphasizing healthy but I'm not going to throw it because it, 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 it grounds you into something, that this is bigger than you. The other day, uh, 
I told Charlie we were going to take her to ice cream after school because of something good that she did. And then on our way to the ice cream, she forgot how good of a girl that she was. And she started talking in a way that was displeasing to her father. And I gave her a warning, and I said, I don't want you to talk like that. And I don't even remember what it was. It could just be that I was touchy that day. I don't know. But I, I, and then um, she did it again, and I remember exactly where we were. We were right in front of Cold Stone, because I can feel Cold Stone, right? It's right it was right here, and I, I hit the brakes, and I turned around, and I gave her a stern talking to about, you, you will not ever talk to me like that. And um, some of you can help her out when she gets older and she sees you for therapy. But I gave, her, I gave her a stern talking to, right? And so we parked the Jeep, and I said, now I figured I made my point, and now we'll go get ice cream. And so we parked, and we got in the, uh, we got in the parking lot, and it's Vicky and Charlie's in the middle. And I reached to grab her hand, and she went like this. <laughs> What are we going to do now? Huh? Now, certainly my ego was bruised. I will give you that. And I was trying not to react on ego, right? And I've, I've been trying to make this point throughout this series on the commandments in Exodus. Is this is not for God and God's ego. None of these commandments, quote, do anything for God. This is all for you. So if you can get that one takeaway from this, you're going to win. God doesn't need any of your stuff, any of your, this is for you. The commandments are for you, for your good. And if you can believe that, then you can dig into them and you will willingly dig into them because you're like, I want to suck the marrow out of this commandment. Last night we were watching this, you may watch this Netflix series Alone, where they just go out in the wilderness and they're just completely by themselves and they have to survive. And, and then this guy, last night I'm watching him suck on a beaver head. Oh, no, he's just like, oh, this is good. And he's just sucking every... Well, you ain't been hungry, have you? You've never been hungry then. <laughs> and he was talking about how nutritious it was, and then he pops an eyeball out, and he starts chewing on that, and, and then just... No, no, true. I mean, the, if you, but if you believed, and he starts talking about the nutritional value of all this, and, but if you believed in the nutritional value of these commandments... You'd, you'd suck every ounce out. You would. You'd think, I gotta, I gotta what, what's the win there? What's the takeaway there? I mean, think about not coveting, being free from wanting. I mean, you could just cut it short and say, why don't you just be happy? Enjoy what you do have. Instead of turning your shoulders all the time, your neck, I gotta wish I had this, I wish I, I'm just happy. What was I going to do? What was I going to do with this? So I thought about it for a minute. Like, don't overreact. Don't, you know. I just looked at her and I said, okay, get back in the car. Oh, my goodness, the tears did flow, you know. And if you could have seen my tears, they weren't coming out, but they were flowing harder on me. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? But I'm like, you are not going to run. The, this is not how this life is going to go, at least when I'm involved, right? And, get, and I had to establish healthy respect. Oh, back in the car. I mean, when you take away ice cream, don't worry. She's got plenty of ants that have over. She was there the next day with her auntie, all right? So she's fine. But here's the thing. Healthy respect. These commandments that come, this is, this is how they end. A little thunder, a little lightning, a little trembling. And if you think about it, when people come out well, I've talked to a lot of people about a lot of things in life because of what I do. I know a lot of stories. And this is my conclusion. It's always better to start with healthy respect. It's always better. You can learn to loosen up, and you can learn to lighten up, and you can learn to let go of things. I'm not talking about abuse, or I'm not talking about anything anywhere close to that. But as I've been saying, the pendulum swings so far in our culture. My, my high school basketball coach called me this week. 
out of the blue. I, I'm trying to think if I've talked to him in 20 years. I don't know. He just called me. It, I don't know if you feel the way I feel, but I always feel like, I, in some ways, like I don't feel like a fully formed adult. Because when, when your coach calls you, you still feel like a child a little bit or something. Is that... Is, and I mean, I just felt like, oh my God, you know, yes, sir, you know, coach. And uh, had all that respect for him. I, <laughs> I remember the first day, you know, we went in there and like, I grew up in Flint. So that's, that's all we do is ball in Flint. Like, <laughs> do you notice how I didn't look, coach? <laughs> my coach is like, yeah, I really don't care that you didn't look because you didn't throw it to your teammate. So next time, look and throw it to the, you know. And, and, and this, I still remember what he said. He goes, he says, Kramer, we're not going to need any of that Flint stuff in here. That's what he said to me. So told all the first day, I still remember him. He was a great, great basketball coach. He said, wait, take your shoes off. Because we're there, we're ready to like ball, you know, let's go. You haven't seen my crossover, you haven't, everybody take your shoes off. Go in the classroom. Whiteboard, C, C, C. Character. 30 minute lecture on character. No shoes. 10 minute lecture on commitment. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? It reminded me of Moses. Take off your shoes. Just take your shoes off. I still, you know, he called me and I'm like, yes, sir, coach, yes, sir. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it does change. Obviously, he's putting out the olive branch. You know, y y your relationships do change. You become more. He called me pastor. I go, please don't call me pastor. And you, no, that's what, you know, and on and on. And I worry about us taking healthy respect out of our society. I really worry about that. I know that we can challenge people in authority. I know that our, 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 our system of government allows us to do that, and I think that it, we should do it in appropriate ways, of course. But I think the blatant just disrespect and disregard for people in authority is becoming a cancer. I mean, it's weird. Like, I, you know, now when, now when I get pulled over for speeding, which rarely happens, uh, but uh, there are guns break, you know, from, but when, I mean, when I get, if I ever get pulled, I still, they're half my age now. And I'm, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Anybody with me? It's not going to kill you. Healthy respect is like a foundation for all of it. Then the next verse, he goes on to say this. Um, so tell the Israelites, you have seen for yourselves, I have spoken to you from heaven. So it's establishing this authority. Do not make any gods to be alongside me. Now, we just went through the Ten Commandments, and the first one is have no gods before me. And now we just finished it, and he says, and also none beside me. Anybody here try to break the rules, just weasel around them? I wasn't in front of you. It was just right over here. Like, did, did, we, did we need to say this rule? Evidently, human nature is that we do. And evidently, human nature is this. This is what I've seen about the alongside. It's sort of what we do in, in modern, and I say we because I'll include myself, is we, we, if you talk to anybody, especially anyone that will say they're like a serious Christ follower or Christian or whatever, they will say, oh yeah, God's number one. And what we don't talk about is what's right alongside. Right? I'll live alongside. I have none alongside. Like, this is my plus one. 
I got Jesus plus one. And well, I want you to think about it. What is it, what's the plus one? And the brilliance that we have in, in, in breaking this is that we don't call him a God and we don't worship. We just give all of our devotion. It's right there next to it. And the other thing that we do is it's not in the category of religion, which is so brilliant of us, so it's not before or it's next to. But what's right next to God in your mind or on your calendar or in your heart? Remember when Isaiah said, you know, you, they honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Absolute freedom in your life Absolute freedom in your life is when you get to the place where God really can take first place. Everything else starts to flow. All the stress, all the anxiety, it starts to dissipate. It really does. And that's why saying that you believe is different than really believing. Because when you really believe, it just goes away. I mean, it actually disappears. Anxiety, worry, all those things, they start to fall away because my trust is that God really is, he really is going to take care of me. And we all struggle here. Lord, I believe, help me overcome my unbelief. It's, like it's, it's a statement. But when you put God there and God finds first place in your life. It's not so that he can stick a flag up and wait. It's so that you can be free and here say, God's, God's in control of this. I'm not saying this to be picky because, well, why are you so worried? I, I'm saying this to set you free. It, think of it this way. Anybody ever been on a real serious, serious diet? Like your doctor looked you in the eye and said, look, Either this has to happen or, the, you know, I'm not talking about you saw a magazine and there was an article and then you went on, you know, for four and a half days. I'm talking about you looked eyeball to eyeball with your doctor and said, this is, or some of you, I've had friends that are like, and they're, they're into competitions of weightlifting or, or body sculpting or something like that. And like, they know you go to a restaurant with them and they're like, well, I need 17 chicken breasts and that's it. You know, and mine's a chicken breast is like, well, you, well, you got to put breading on both sides and then gravy and then mashed potatoes. And, you know, that's how you eat a chicken breast, but not these people. And the, the reason is because they know what they do has a consequence. It's a consequence. And you, they're, they're so picky. You say, Chris, why are you getting so picky with these? I'm just, I'm just trying to, for us to think through, well, what's the consequence? What's the result? And they come out and, man, man, they look good and they're healthy and they can work and run and do what they want to do. And you think, that's a pretty good result. But you have to be picky. You really have to be picky about what you put alongside God. And then he goes on to say this. After they, they remain at a distance, he says to them about, about having no gods alongside me. Then he says, the next verse says this, make an altar of earth for me and sacrifice on it your burnt offerings. So I just want to talk for a minute about sacrifice. Because a lot of times when you read it in the Scriptures, you're like, I don't really know what to do with that. Or you quickly fast forward to Jesus being the ultimate sacrifice, which is fair and fine to do. The scripture says these were a shadow of things that were to come. But what's, what's at the root of this idea of sacrifice? Instead of just saying, well, Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice, which again, you could say, is there any... Is there, any, is there any marrow in that? Are there any, is there any nutritional value in the idea of sacrifice? And if you start to think deeply about sacrifice, you start to realize that really at the heart of life is sacrifice. Every single day you make sacrifices of some sort or another. 
You sacrifice something in the present so they would give up an animal in the belief that God would bless them in the future or they would turn in some grain or that whatever it would be. And it was the belief that this will reward my future. I, I really would like to keep it or use it, but I'm going to let go of it so that tomorrow will be better. And this was a game-changing idea. It wasn't just done, by the way, with Israel, if, if you study cultures, it was done all over the world. That deep inside of the human being is this idea of sacrifice, letting go of something so that you can have something better tomorrow. This we need to reclaim. Going to work tomorrow is a sacrifice. If it's nice out and you like to be just laying on the lounge chair and you get up and you go to work, it's so that tomorrow can be better. Going to the gym is what? A sacrifice. It's like, I don't want to go to the gym. Who wants to go to the gym? You're sweating and grunting and just, ouch. So that maybe it's for tomorrow. You let going of something for tomorrow. Raising kids is a sacrifice. So I know I can get an amen there. <laughs> like, this, it's work. It's work. It takes you out of... It, it's one of the reasons I... If you're young, you, you need to listen to me because too many young people are listening to the culture around them and, and they're being told not to sacrifice anything. Don't get married because that's a sacrifice. It is a sacrifice. It is. You, you, it has wonderful results, but if, you, if you're being told there's no sacrifice there, then you were told incorrectly. You know, I do a lot of uh, premarital counseling. Before I, I do weddings for people, and you know, one of the things you have to understand is like, so you, so you don't want to be single, right? Because <laughs> that's like a seems like a pretty basic premise, but there's a lot to that. Here's what single people do, whatever they want. <laughs> Am I right? Am I close? Here's what married people do, what both of you want, negotiated together. Well, that kind of stinks. Well, <laughs> then you don't want to be married. You've got to sacrifice to have that. To have children, you have to sacrifice. On and on and on you would go and you'd say, this is so important because now what we're, it's like this generation, they're being told, you don't have to sacrifice anything. And that's just not true. Coming to church is a sacrifice. This is brutal. <laughs> Look at the things you could be doing. But you sacrifice. No, you do. You sacrifice. And some of you grew up old school and you're like, I'm going no matter what. You know, I mean, within reason, right? But it's like, it's just boom, boom, boom. And somehow you're saying to yourself, there's something there for me in my future. Something how it's going to form me and shape my character. And Practicing your sport, that's sacrifice. All of life is a sacrifice. And here's the key to doing it right. Priority, sacrificing the lower to the higher. That's the whole thing. You're always letting go of something. That's a good way of thinking of it. You're always letting go of something so you can have something else. And if we could teach this and we could internalize this, you're always thinking about for the next thing. It's for your good and for your future. Now, I'm going to wrap it up. We're going to share communion together, speaking of sacrifice. I want to read this, because I think this is an important part. So after he talks about the, the, there's a thunder, and there's this reiteration about no gods alongside, then he goes on to say this. Then the Lord said to Moses, you've seen I have spoken to you from heaven. And then to make an altar for sacrifices. Then this first law is this. 
If you buy a Hebrew servant, he is to serve you for six years, but in the seventh year he shall go free. But if the servant declares, I love my master and do not want to go free, then his master must take him before the judges and take him to the doorpost and pierce his ear with an owl and he will be his servant for life. It's curious that this came here. Now, there's a lot to talk about here without the time. That's why I'm never getting through this book. But <laughs> let me, let, we'll do it quick. First of all, if you buy a servant. So slavery was the thing. It, 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 it wasn't like it is in our modern recent history. It wasn't that exactly, although I'm, there were, I'm sure, abusive things. But people were bought and sold. You got into debt. You sold yourself, and you paid your debts off, and that was a thing. Um, so I'll do a little digression, and we'll come back. The digression is this, understanding how to interpret the Scripture. Um, Game-changing for me several years ago. Um, was starting to understand that how you interpreted the Bible was huge. So... You can interpret the Bible, look at it, read what it says, don't look for any context. It can be really brutal that way. The Bible says a lot of things that if, you, if that's all you looked at and you look for no context and uh, it, it can be bu brutal. But if you look for context, it can be beautiful. And that's the difference. You see people who hold on to this and I've seen and heard some really brutal things with this in front. And a, but, man, I've seen some beauty. So let me just try to throw a tip out when it comes to interpreting. It seems like what, what happens in the scriptures is God meets people where they are. They were slavery. And you could re, you know, just open it and say, no slavery, that's wrong, don't ever do it. But, but it seems like what, what happens in the scripture is there's this, this, this slow evolution of growth. And it's like God meets them where they are so that he can take them someplace better. I don't know how exactly to explain this, except maybe if, if you've ever been in a workout situation and maybe you're, you're way out of shape or something like that, and you could say, the best thing for you to do is to run 100-yard wind sprints, do 150 push-ups, you know, and you're doing something for like a super athlete. He's like, all you're going to do is pull a hammy. <laughs> right? And discourage yourself. Yeah. No, true. Like, this is where I am. Just, how about f just, just, just 20 minutes of this? How about just this? Because this is where you are. So all these people, this is their, their level of consciousness. Maybe we'll say it that way. And this is what they can do. And it slowly, it it, it dies away, and God meets them where they are, like a great trainer would do. He'd meet you where you are. This is where you are. That's okay. At least you're here, and we'll make progress. And then, watch this. You get to the New Testament, and Paul says this. In Christ, there is no man or woman, slave or free. They're all one in Christ Jesus. There's no Jew. There's no Gentile. All that breaks down. But it takes a long time to get there. Does that make sense? So that's just how people thought. And God's meeting them where they are, but he's taking them somewhere. Now let me close this. What about this servant thing? Servant's been with this master for a long time, and he's, he's earned his freedom. He's ready to go free, and he's, that's pretty good here. I don't want to go. Think about that. It takes care of me. Pays the bills, pays my family. You would think of him like a, a really great employee. You know, it gives me a great place to sleep. And like, I don't want to go. And they would go, put his ear on the doorpost, bam, bam, bam. Put an earring in. He says, I'm his servant for life. I thought, that's, that's what I want my life to be. I want to get to the spot where I've served God enough time and if you were to say you go free I would say no no I'm your servant for life 
I can't find a better place to go. Does anybody remember John chapter 6? When people are deserting Jesus left and right, they're all bailing out. And he looks at the 12 and he's like, what about you guys? And Peter says, Lord, you alone have the words of eternal life. Where, would, where else would we go? I got nowhere else to go. I think you get it. You finally really, really get it. When church is not an obligation, it's, it, it is 100% opportunity. Your relationship with God is pure opportunity. Where else would I go? This is the place. And I thought, that's how we'll do communion today. This will be our ear on the doorpost moment. This will be our, God, where else can I go? You have the words of eternal life. It's from you. You could search and search it. The whole theme of Exodus is freedom, but it's this, it's this measured freedom. It's freedom to serve God. Total freedom is an absolute farce. This is, I don't know if I can get this through exactly. But like, I, I'm not beholden to anyone. I'm not, I, I answer to no one. It, it, it's absolute anarchy socially, but it's anarchy inside of you, which is really what a lot of people are experiencing. They have internal anarchy. It's, we also call it anxiety. It's just, they're not committed to anything. So you, it's this, I found Christ and there, there isn't anything better. When I was a little kid, we used to have the little, anybody remember the slot cars? Zzz, zzz, zzz. Remember it? You take the eraser and you put the little metal strips on there and you keep it. Does anybody know they have the electric thing? You guys don't know this? No, oh, okay, my age. But the thing was, you know, you race against your brother and all this, but man, you could, you could juice them, but you couldn't juice them too much or it would go what? Go off the track. You got to get back on the track. You got to get back in the slot. In other words, to be too free, then you were done. You don't, you don't want absolute freedom. You want absolute devotion. That's what you want. And that's where you find freedom. Then you can run. As soon as you jump the track, you're done. There's no freedom anymore because you have no connection now you're not connected to the rails. You're not connected to the source. And I really feel like that's what's happened in our society. I think what we've had, we've craved and cried freedom. Nope, you can't tell me. You can't tell me what to do. And we've jumped the track, and there we sit, disconnected to the power source, out of the slot. So this is our commitment. Maybe you breathe this. Maybe you breathe this. Where else could I go, Lord? You alone have the words of eternal life. Let's stand. Well, we'll start. I'm sorry. We'll stand and stand. We'll start in the front. You guys can come. Take the bread and the cup and hold on to it until everyone's received at home. Wherever you're watching, you can do the same. Grab something and you can join us in a couple minutes here.
Sometimes you know you're with a good master when you realize they're not a taker, they're a giver. Jesus is not a taker. He's here to give, to give you life, to give you life in its fullness, to give you life in its abundance. And there will come direction, there will come correction, there will come challenge. All of that comes with it. But in the end, Jesus is a giver. I came to give you life in its most abundant form. And to that Jesus, we say, I'm your servant for life. I'm yours. Mark, mark me. Count me in. Where else could I go? On the night he was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it and he said, this is my body broken for you, the bread. After supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. As often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again, the cup. We stand together. God, we commit ourselves to you. 
in a renewed way today. Not because we will do it perfectly, but because there's nowhere else to go. You alone have the words of life. To be free is to be in your arms, is to be in your house, is to be in your service. And so God, sign us up, each and every one of us, to serve you for life. In Christ's name, amen. 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 Happy Sunday, Orchard Grove. God bless you.